most favored nation. This week we are going to learn about the history of most favored nation, the legal framework of MFN and exceptions to the MFN rule, the economic implications of MFN, and the last one is major cases of MFN. The first part I will describe about the history of MFN. Whilst the origins of the modern MFN clause can be traced back to the 15th century, it is perhaps most useful for the present purposes to consider the role of the MFN clause in the golden age of European economic liberalism of the mid-L9th century. Modern understandings of MFN treatment as a policy of equal treatment for all trading partners can really be traced to the period of 1860 to 1914. It was during this time that the MFN clause became a prominent component of the series of Friendship, Commerce and Navigation FCN, treaties negotiated amongst the relatively equal powers in Europe. The FCN treaties had as their principal objective the reduction of relatively high tariff rates on trade in goods. As these treaties lasted only about 10 years on average, the pre-First World War period involved constant negotiations to set new levels of tariff bindings. Each bilateral deal was a separate negotiation and, accordingly, there was always the possibility that the value of a given deal with a country could be undercut by deeper levels of trade concessions made to other countries. In this context, it is not difficult to see why countries would refuse to enter into such bilateral deals unless the commercial value of their tariff reductions was protected by an unconditional MFN obligation guaranteeing that any subsequent concessions on these products would also be accorded to them without further payment. Legal Framework of MFN GATT Practice Regarding MFN Treatment as Stipulated in GATT Articles I, 13, and 17 GATT Article 1.1 provides for WTO members to extend MFN treatment to like products of other WTO members regarding tariffs, regulations on exports and imports, internal taxes and charges, and internal regulations. In other words, like products from all WTO members must be given the same treatment as the most advantageous treatment accorded the products of any state. Should a importing country flagrantly extend differential treatment to like products of the exporting country, by setting different tariff rates it would clearly be in violation of GATT Article I colon 1. However, Article 1.1, violations can also occur even when there is no discrimination against the product of another member, such as when an importing country accords differential treatment among products that are considered to be like products. This is often defined as de facto discrimination. Non-discriminatory administration of quantitative restrictions. GATT Article 13 stipulates that, with regard to like products, quantitative restrictions or tariff quotas on any product must be administered in a non-discriminatory fashion. It also stipulates that, in administering import restrictions and tariff quotas, WTO members shall aim to allocate shares approaching as closely as possible to that which might be expected in their absence. Article 13 provides for MFN treatment in the administration of quantitative restrictions, and supplements the disciplines under Article 1. GATT Article 17 obliges WTO members to act in accordance with the rules of non-discrimination, including the MFN rule. States trading enterprises are defined as, 1, state enterprises established or maintained by a WTO member, or 2, private enterprises granted exclusive or special privileges by WTO members that make purchases or sales involving either imports or exports. By making use of their monopolistic status, such enterprises could operate against the principles of international trade through discrimination on the part of importing country and quantitative restrictions. Exceptions to the MFN Rule 1. Regional Integration 
get Article Exiv. Regional integration through customs unions or free trade areas liberalizes trade among countries within the regions, while maintaining trade barriers with countries outside the region or regions. Regional integration therefore may lead to results that are contrary to the MFN principle because countries inside and outside the region are treated differently. This may have a negative effect on countries outside the region and is at odds with the liberalisatio of trade. Therefore, GATT Article Exiv provides that regional integration may be allowed as an exception to the MFN rule only if the following conditions are met. First, tariffs and other barriers to trade must be eliminated with respect to substantially all trade within the region. Second, the tariffs and other barriers to trade applied to outside countries must not be higher or more restrictive than they were prior to regional integration. Generalized System of Preferences The Generalized System of Preferences GSP, is a system that grants products originating in developing countries lower tariff rates than those normally enjoyed under MFN status. GSP is a special measure granted to developing countries in order to increase their export earnings and to promote their development. The GSP is defined in the GATT decision on generalized system of preferences of June 1971. Granting of GSP preferences is justified by the 1979 GATT decision on differential and more favorable treatment, reciprocity and fuller participation of developing countries or the enabling clause. The GSP has the following characteristics, first, preferential tariffs may be applied not only to countries with special historical and political relationships, but also to developing countries more generally, thus the system is described as generalized, second, the beneficiaries are limited to developing countries. Finally, it is a benefit unilaterally granted by developed countries to developing countries. Non-application of multilateral trade agreements between particular member states, WTO Article 13. These Article 13 provisions were created to deal with problems arising from accessions. Ideally, the MFN rule would be strictly applied so that when country B accedes to the agreement, it is required to confer MFN status on all other members, and they, in turn, are required to confer MFN status on country B. However, country A, which is already a member of the WTO, may have reasons for not wanting to confer the rights and obligations of the WTO on new member B because the WTO only requires the consent of two-thirds of the existing membership for accession, it is conceivable that country A might, against its will, be forced to give MFN status to country B. WTO Article 13 is a way to respect country A's wishes by preventing a WTO relationship from taking effect between countries A and B. On the other hand, WTO Article 13 provides a way for the accession of country B, even if more than a third of the membership, like country A, has reasons for not wanting a WTO relationship with country B, in which case they will object to the accession itself, by allowing for non-application. Economic Implications of MFN Increased Efficiency in the World Economy MFN treatment makes it possible for countries to import from the most efficient supplier, in accordance with the principle of comparative advantage. For example, if country B can supply product X at a lower price than country C, country A can increase its economic efficiency by importing it from country B. If, however, country A applies higher tariff rates to product X from country B than to product X from country C, country A may be forced to import product X from country C, even though country C is not as efficient a supplier. This distorts trade and reduces the welfare of country A and the economic efficiency of the entire world. If, however, the MFN principle is applied between the three countries, 
then Contria will levy its tariffs equally and therefore necessarily import product X from country B because it is cheaper to do so. The most efficient result is thus attained. Stabilize RTO of the multilateral trading system. The MFN rule requires that favorable treatment granted to one country be immediately and unconditionally granted to all other countries' trade restrictions, too must also be applied equally to all. This increases the risk of the introduction of trade restrictions becoming a political issue, raises the costs of doing so, and therefore tends to support the liberalized status quo. By stabilizing the free trade system in this manner, MFN increases predictability and therefore increases trade and investment. Reduction of the cost of maintaining the multilateral trading system MFN reduces the cost of maintaining the multilateral trading system. The equal treatment demanded by the MFN principle tends to act as a force for unifying treatment at the most advantageous level, for trade that means the most liberal level. The establishment and maintenance of the MFN rule enables WTO members to reduce their monitoring and negotiation costs for disadvantageous treatment. In short, the most favored nation rule has the effect of reducing the cost of maintaining the free trade system. Major Cases of MFN Canada Case, Measures Regarding Automobiles, Under the Auto Pact, The Agreement Concerning Automotive Products with the United States, which took effect in 1966, the Government of Canada accorded duty-free treatment to vehicles, provided that importers, the big three and others, hereinafter referred as auto-packed members, met certain conditions, for example, Canadian value added, the required rates varied, but in general they were 60% or more. The system had been administered so as to give tariff exemption to automobiles imported by any company as long as the companies met the above conditions, but the signing of the Free Trade Agreement, FTA, between the United States and Canada resulted in barring extension of the auto-packed status to any new companies. This treatment continued after the North American Free Trade Agreement, after, took effect. What this in essence meant was that original auto-packed member companies in Canada could import automobiles duty-free so long as they met the above conditions, while non-members had to pay a 6.1% tariff rate as February 2000, despite the fact that all of these companies involved like products and services through production, importation and sale of automobiles. The Ministry of Economy, Trade and Industry, METI, deemed this a priority trade policy, and in July 1998 requested bilateral consultations with Canada under WTO dispute settlement procedures. Japan requested the establishment of a panel in November of that year, and in February 1999 a panel was established to review the Japanese complaint in conjunction with a similar EU complaint. The panel issued its report in February 2000, and the appellate body issued its report in May. Both reports upheld virtually all of the Japanese argument, finding that the measure, 1 violated GATT Article I colon 1, MFN treatment, 2, violated GATT Article 3, 4, national treatment, 3, violated the SCM agreement, 4, violated Article 17 of the GATT's, national treatment, and 5, that the duty waiver violated Article 2 of the GATT's, MFN treatment, and Article 17, national treatment, of the GATT's. However, this last finding was overturned by the appellate body. Canada repealed the auto-pacts measures on February 19, 2001.